You're listening to The Dr. Chris Show. Are you tired of the short-term patch to your health problems? Is avoiding medications and surgeries important to you? If you answered yes, then your prayers have been answered. Dr. Chris has been helping people transform their health for over a decade. He's a world-renowned health expert who specializes in holistic health. He's a professional speaker, chiropractor, and international best-selling author. It's his mission to help you reach your full God-given potential through holistic health and healing. Get ready to be inspired and transformed. Here's your host, Dr. Chris. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode where disease takes a dive and people come to thrive. And today, I want to reach out to you about where you're at this quarter, moving forward into this new year. Now, you've already had a chance to go through all your New Year's resolutions and create those and maybe break those. And statistics show that by the second week of January, 80% of people will have already broken or totally abandon their New Year's resolutions. And so by now, you've probably already completely abandoned those. There's a few of you still hanging on, and I'm proud of you. And if you didn't hang on, I'm still proud of you because you're listening to me today, which means you have hope to want to change your health, your state, your being. You know, this is so easy to do. You know, I even took a little break from just doing podcasts. You know, we took a about a month or two from recording, just took that off, took some time to recharge. And you got to do that for yourself. You got to recharge yourself. And some of you through the holidays took some time off, but you didn't recharge yourself because, man, you were just stressed out from the holiday season, from all the gift giving and presents and parties and foods and not taking care of yourself like you should and maybe taking a break from exercising, which is not the same as recharging yourself. We get confused with that. We oftentimes in our lives and our culture think that taking a vacation means that taking a vacation from all the things that allow us to be healthy and disease doesn't take a vacation. Right? When we go on a trip, disease doesn't say, oh, hey, yeah, by the way, I'm going to check out too. Uh, I'm going to see you in a couple of weeks when you get back. No, disease keeps coming at you day in and day out. And so while we can take a vacation, we can't take a vacation from our health. We still need to do the things that are going to allow us to be successful. And this has to do with anything in life, whether it be our relationships, our spiritual life, our health. We need to have certain health principles, success principles that are going to help us continue to move forward in life. And it can help us get back on track. And while we might take a break from, say, our jobs or from the usual in and out day after day routine that we have when it comes to you know, the kids, the dropping off kids at practice or running around errands or going to our jobs and traveling with our work and all these things that just can stress you out. We need to make sure we're doing the right type of recharging. So I want to talk to you about that a little bit today because it's really easy to put those things off. You know, a lot of times when we start to put things off, we think it's going to be really hard and difficult to do that thing. And so we just keep putting it off, even in our daily checklist, right? The things we want to do on a daily basis. It's better to get those big things out of the way first than waiting to put those off to the end of the day. So for instance, me recording a podcast right now, those are one of the things that are a little more difficult for me to do. But I didn't put this off till the very end of the day because I know if that happens, it's just not going to happen. And it kind of reminds me of a story that happened just recently. Oh, geez. That, well, the, the pre-frame to this story happened a couple of years ago to set this up. It was probably it was about two, yeah, about two years ago. We had a big windstorm up at our house. It was the same day that we had the garbage out. So in our location, we actually take the garbage out to the end of our driveway, which is probably... Oh, geez, I don't know, maybe like a couple hundred feet. And then the garbage truck comes, picks it up, and takes it away. Well, they had done that, but the windstorm came up. We probably had like 50-mile-an-hour gusts, and we live up on a hill. And behind our hill house is a big ravine and canyon. It's probably about an 800-foot drop. It's a long, steep hill. You can barely hike up and down it without needing some kind of gear. And so this windstorm, it took the garbage and it made it disappear. Like I didn't know where it went. In fact, we had two garbages up there because that winter we had the garbage company actually come and bring us a second garbage because they couldn't bring the regular garbage truck down to pick up our garbage. So they just took a pickup truck and dropped off an empty container. So we had both of those up there, but only came back with one. So one was up there still. And I thought, well, hey, they just must have taken that extra garbage came back finally. It was like a year later, right? And so I was like, okay, that's fine, whatever. Well, 
the next winter, so like about a, a year, year and a half later, I went down at the back of our hill on a snowmobile because we had another big snowstorm. And so I went down there and I was driving down the backside of our, our home down this, this steep slope and I'm going down and all of a sudden I see something sticking out of the snow. I think it's a rock. And it was the garbage can. It was literally two thirds of the way down this hill in this deep ravine. It had been there for over a year, maybe a, a year and a half. And I just was like, you know what? Screw it. I don't want to go get this thing. It's, it's snowy. I, there's no way I could grab this thing. I'll just wait till the spring to go get it. So next spring rolls around. I think about it once or twice over the spring. Didn't really want to go get it because it was kind of windy and a little cold outside. And then summer came and then I didn't want to go down there because I was afraid there might be rattlesnakes down there. I didn't want to get bit because it's in all these like weeds and sagebrush and there are a lot of rattlesnakes in that area. It's like, just not worth it. I'm like, I'll just wait till the next spring. So here we are probably two and a half years from this thing going down in the ravine. I finally decide last week that, Hey, you know what? I had a little bit extra time. The snow had melted. It's still really cold outside. This is my one chance to go get this thing. Cause the snakes aren't going to be out there. There's no snow. This is my one chance. So I hike down there. It's, it's still pretty windy, but it's not crazy windy. So I go down there. I hike down this ravine. I had just done a leg day, so a little added workout on top of everything. And I go down to the bottom of this ravine. I finally get to the garbage, turn around and look back up. And this thing is steep, way more deceiving. You know, going down is always easier than going up. <laughs> and so I, I started to go up and I'm calling this full size garbage can, you know, the big heavy duty plastic ones, right? The 96 gallon ones. And I'm pulling this thing up behind me in this steep hill and I'm going up and I'm, I'm pulling layers up as I'm going on. I'm pulling my hat off. I'm pulling my gloves off. I'm unbuttoning my jacket because it was cold when I went out there and now I'm, I'm burning up. I'm starting to sweat and I'm taking a couple of breaks as I go up because I'm just, you know, out of breath going up this thing. And I finally get to about three quarters of the way up and my shoes come untied. So now I'm trying to hold on to this garbage can on this steep hill, trying to tie my shoes with out the wind blowing this garbage can back down because it starts to catch it and starts to wiggle it and I grab it before it goes and rolls down to the bottom of the hill again. Finally get my shoes tied, get up to the top of the hill, finally get this garbage can back to its normal spot where we keep the other garbage can, right? And I'd finally put off things for so long. When I finally accomplished this thing, it wasn't something that I regretted. Like I didn't regret going down to the bottom of that canyon and getting an extra workout in and having an extra garbage can now and, and having that extra little bit of a, a luxury, I guess. But the point is, is that in life, oftentimes we put things off thinking that it's going to be such a bad ordeal. It's going to be so hard when really at the end of the day, it's really not as hard as we think it's going to be. And the reward is way more than we think it's ever going to be in the first place. And to have that accomplishment and to be able to do something that you didn't think you were going to be able to do or that you just didn't want to do uh, can go a long ways in helping you hit other goals and helping you just notch a little little hole in that belt to get you to that next level so you can keep reaching your goals. And it's just about not always hitting these grand slam goals, these grand slam things you got to do like, hey, I want to make a million dollars or that you want to have this huge house or this exotic vacation or whatever that might be for you, this big thing. It's about hitting the little goals along the way. For me, it was getting that garbage can, right? <laughs> a little little bit of a victory helped me stop from procrastinating and putting this thing off I've been putting on for so long. And when you do those types of things, it starts to open up the universe for you to be able to accomplish other things, other things you need to do, other things on that bucket list, that checklist. They're going to help move you in the right direction. And so today I want to help you challenge yourself to really think about where there's some aspect of your life that You've been procrastinating at. You've been putting this thing off that you know it might not be a, a world-changing, life-changing thing for you if you accomplish it, but it is something that you need to do. And it's something that if you can do, it's going to help you get one step closer to that bigger goal. So that's why when we get to this time of year or any time of year that you're looking at you know, reworking your goals and what you want to do and what you want to accomplish is taking the time to chunk down that goal into smaller more actionable steps. Things are not going to seem overwhelming at the time. So if you want to make that million dollars, well, okay, well, what do you need to do to even start making from a, a, an extra thousand dollars a month instead of a, an extra hundred thousand dollars a month, right? What could you do and start to chunk that down? Maybe it's some phone calls. Maybe it's getting one or two more extra clients. Maybe you want to have just better health. You want to finally lose the weight. 
Well, it doesn't mean that you have to lose the hundred pounds overnight, but maybe you just need to start working out or maybe you need to start changing how you're eating. So, Hey, you're just going to start meal prepping on Sundays, or maybe it's going to be something like, Hey, you're going to uh, get in that workout, start off three days a week is all. And then in the next month, work up to five days a week, whatever that looks like for you. It's just a matter of chunking that and getting that down and, and understanding that. And so when we, when we really look at the things that we need to do, when I came back into understanding what I need to do for myself to recharge, you know, we end up going on a trip to Thailand. So my wife and I, uh, we went to Thailand over the Christmas holiday to just recharge, reset our minds, mind, body, and spirit. And, you know, there was definitely some struggle with that, you know, to, to recharge my mind, my body, my spirit. There were some things that I was still struggling with that I needed to get clarity on. And, and, you know, I'll be honest with you, it wasn't until after, after that whole recharge, that some things finally became clear to me, but sometimes it takes that removal from your daily life to say, Hey, what can I do differently? And one of the things that I thought was really amazing was just some of the breakthroughs that we were able to have from just stepping away from the normal daily life. And one of the things that I thought was great was actually for my wife. And so my wife, Deidre, you've heard me talk about her before. If you listen to these podcasts before, you know, she is definitely probably, well, she's not definitely, she is the, the least adventurous of the two of us, but she is adventurous. But I oftentimes will put her in, in situations where she's a little uncomfortable to say the least, right? She follows me knowing that this might be a bad idea, uh, but that she trusts me. And so we ended up going in Thailand. We're at this place in Raleigh Beach and it's this hidden lagoon, but you have to, it's amazing. It's beautiful when you get there, uh, hidden up and tucked in these limestone cliffs away from everyone else and has this a uh, cool color to the water. And it's just really amazing. But you have to hike up this pretty intense hike. It's, I wouldn't call it a hike. It's actually a climb. Like there are ropes involved. Uh, if you fall, you will severely hurt yourself. And so we're climbing up and climbing up was one thing, but then we had to go back down the other side to get to this lagoon. And there were areas where you had to climb down literally cliff walls that were, you know, 20, maybe 25 feet tall. And there were about three or four of these. And some places you'd actually have to crawl through these little literally holes in this limestone to climb down this other part where you descend from this cliff. And so there are people that would get to the top and then look down and be like, "Mm -mm, this is not for me. I'm not going to do this. And there were men, women, didn't matter. But as we started to go down, you know, I convinced Deidre's like, hey, it's going to be okay. Like, I'll help you. I'll guide you down. If there's any point you're not comfortable with, hey, we'll, we'll turn around, right? And so she starts to descend and we're going down. We get down to this first main drop and she's a little freaked out by it right she's a little worried um, she doesn't really know if she wants to do it and just about that time this little head pops up over the cliff coming back up out of the, that cliff area and this this little 10 year old girl little tiny thing little petite little 10 year old girl she had just climbed all the way down to the lagoon and climbed back up and didn't have any fear at all and that's when both of us looked at each other and said okay if she can do it we can do it and we started the descent and Deidre went down and we helped her and she, she did it. I mean, she did it on her own, honestly. And, and we were able to get down to the lagoon and we enjoyed that time. That was just a great experience. And it was something we were really able to enjoy together and it made it back out and, and no injuries, no problems at all. But it was that little girl is what gave that a little bit extra confidence to Deidre to say, Hey, if she can do it, I can do it. And I want you to find those examples in your own life, right? Because there are people all around you that don't have any more skills than you, don't have any more athletic ability of you, don't have any more brain power than you, don't have any more resources than you, than you that are doing great things, that are doing the things that you want to do, the things that you are, have been passionate about, the things that you've been setting your, your mind to want to do, but you just haven't quite done it because you've sold yourself short. But I want you to find those people and they're in your life and, and you can look at those people and say, hey, if they can do it, then I can do it. If them, why not me? So when you start to surround yourself with those examples, you can really start to push yourself to the next level. But what we want to not do is we don't want to compare ourselves to others all the time. So it's different. It's different looking at someone and saying, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. But it's dangerous to start to compare yourself to others and say, well, hey, they're doing X, Y, and Z. How come... I'm not able to achieve that, 
right? Why am I not enough, right? You start thinking like, I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. And that becomes a really dangerous place. And what I want you to do is I want you to only compete with yourself, right? Push yourself every day. Push yourself a little bit more, just like Deidre did. She pushed herself a little bit more, and she was able to accomplish something that she thought she would never be able to do. She does not like heights. She does not like climbing. She does not like those things. But after she did it, she was super excited. She was super motivated. It helped give her confidence, not just in that area of life of climbing or being adventurous, but to be able to do other things in her life that she wasn't confident in or that she was cautious about. So what is that thing for you? What can you do to move yourself forward today to make yourself a little uncomfortable that might not be the most convenient thing, that might be the thing that you've been putting off, but is going to make you that uncomfortableness to where you can achieve it, you will achieve it. Once you do, you're going to be doing some great things with your life. So what are those things for you? I'm curious. Now, on a side note, this is totally separate from what we're talking about here, but I want you to understand that while you have everything you need inside of your body to in your mind, your body, your spirit to accomplish great things, we have the ability to do some really amazing things with our own health too, right? Mind, body, spirit. So we can accomplish great things. We can allow our body to heal a cut without having to think about it. Our bodies can heal from cancer. So no matter what you're struggling with right now, you can overcome what you're dealing with. Because what you're dealing with right now, these obstacles, these bumps in the road, whatever you want to call them, these are just seasons. These are not the end destination for you. This is not your home, this place you're in. If you're in a dark place, if you're in a, in a discouraged place, this is not your home. This is not where you reside. This is simply just a season in your life. This is a season you're going to move forward to. But if you let that become your reality, just like if you let a disease become your identity, like diabetes or cancer or an autoimmune disease, hey, that's just me, that's who I am, then you never can move past that becomes your home. So this place you're in right now, it's not your place. It's just a season that's passing through, and you can get over that. But let's start about looking at where we can start to get ourselves out of a a dark place, whether that be in our jobs, in our careers, in our health, in just how we're feeling with our emotions or with our relationships. Where it all starts at is it first starts with the drive to want to get better. Now, it can be tough when you're really depressed, you're suffering from anxiety, depression. Uh, It can be tough to find that motivation to want to do something better. But you have that drive. Like, you wouldn't be alive right now if you didn't have some drive to want to get out of that thing. So first off, it starts with that. Now, one of the things that I think is great is obviously things like affirmations start faking it until you make it, telling yourself that that you're going to get out of this situation, that you're abundant in all these areas that you feel you're lacking in. And eventually, you will start to believe it a little bit more. And then a little bit more until you really start to own that thing. And there's always going to be that self-doubt, that self-talk that's going to be in the back of your mind. It's always going to be there a little bit, but it's just a matter of whether you're turning that volume up to 11 and it's just blasting in your ear all the time or whether you turn it down to like a one. And you can barely even hear it. And most of the time you can even zone that out because it's just so quiet. That's where I want to see you get to. But from there, we can really start to also work on the things that are going to help feed our brain and our mind. So one of those things being is getting movement in your body, right? So are you starting to get into exercise? Are you starting to get active? Are you doing things that are going to help get your body moving? Are you just staying inside all the time? Are you just staying inside your work cubicle? Are you just staying inside your home? Are you getting out? Are you moving? Are you staying active? Those things are going to release endorphins. Those things are going to release hormones. They're going to stimulate your creative intelligence in your your mind, your body, and your spirit. And it's really going to start to help you break past some barriers, Then we can start to also feed with food too. So a lot of times when we get depressed or we're struggling with our confidence, uh, life isn't really going the way we want it to go, we'll just revert back to food. And that's really easy to do during the holiday season, the sugary foods, the gluttonous foods, the comfort foods. But those are things going to just make us spiral deeper and deeper into that hole. So I encourage you to just do something simple like a food journal. Really see what you're eating, what you're putting into your life. And then you can review back through that and say, okay, what am I doing well at? Where am I struggling? And sometimes you know you're eating bad, but you still need to write it down just to see, like, is this the person that you want to be? 
is this what you really want to put into your body? And what's that, what is that really creating in your life? Is that really what you want? Do you really want the results of what that thing is going to create for you and keeping this habit up for the next four weeks, four months, four years? It can be a pretty scary and dark place. So I want you to start to think about that and understand that. Food journal, simple way to accomplish that. Then from there, you can really start to start to create that foundation because every day, the success we have on a daily basis is going to be stemmed from the habits that we have, the routines that we have, the success principles we have on a daily basis. So the first thing I encourage you to do as you get done listening to this podcast is if you want to change the outcome of this first quarter of the year for the whole 2020, for 2020 and beyond, wherever you're at right now, whether you promised yourself you were going to change something and gave yourself a New Year's resolution and you failed, it is okay. Failure just means you're getting one step closer to accomplishing the thing that you want to get to. Sometimes you need to fail five, six, seven, eight, 10, 20, 30 times before you start to get to where you want to be in life. So what is that routine you're building in your life? What are you doing the first thing you do when you wake up? I want you to at the very least either do an affirmation, a journal, or prayer, even meditation. One of those four things. It can be as little as just a few minutes just to start to get your mind right. I want you to at least, the second thing I want you to do to get your mind going in the morning is I want to see you look at what your goals are. Those, those big visions, those smaller visions. Just take a quick glance at them. Remind yourself of why you're doing what you're doing. I want you to get in some kind of physical activity. It could be something as simple as just doing 20 air squats to get your blood flowing for the day. Or it could be something that's more intense, like doing a, a 20 to 60 minute workout. Whatever you have time for, make time for it. Just don't let time control you. So get that get that physical fitness going, whatever that looks like. Maybe it's only three days a week when you're doing the more intense workouts, but every day get some type of movement going. And then I want you to look and see what are you eating on a daily basis, right? Start to make good choices. If you could do one thing today, start making smoothies that have, you know, power greens in there and things like bone broth protein or collagen protein and putting some berries in there, some good fats like avocado or coconut milk or almond butter and, and start to really just give yourself a start to the day and setting yourself up for success. Having those go-tos that are going to be putting good nutrients towards your brain because it all starts with brain health, man. If you don't have good brain health, if you're not supporting that brain, uh, you're just going to get more stinking thinking. You're going to get more bad habits. You're going to not change what you are on the inside, which will express what you're trying to accomplish on the outside as well. So with that said, uh, I just want you guys to have success this year, this moment. Live every moment as if it's your last. Take today. Start to just look at today. Start to accomplish those things today. Work at your big rocks first today. Get those accomplished. Get those out of the way first. The rest of your day is going to be a lot easier. You can start moving forward from there. So I appreciate you guys. We'll see you on the next podcast. Remember, your body needs no help healing, just no interference. Thanks for listening, and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. To get this and other episodes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to newedgewellness.com or listen to the Happy Healthy Hormones with Dr. Chris podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher.